How's it going everybody? It's Razine here for Astrophilosophy, and in today's episode of The Night Sky, I'm going to be talking to you about The Night Sky in August. So if you're new here and you're not sure what I mean by The Night Sky series, basically it's a curated list of deep sky targets, nebulae, constellations, galaxies, star clusters, anything that I think might be interesting to take a photo of in the Northern Hemisphere during the month of August, almost said January then. How this is gonna work out is I've made a list from all these variety of focal lengths and I'm going to be presenting targets to you at those focal lengths. Now this has been taken from a full frame camera. However, again, I have made adjustments depending on popular camera sizes on the market. So it doesn't matter what combination of camera and telescope you have, I'm confident you're going to find something to photograph. Next up we have 200 to 300 millimeters of focal length. And in this case, I'm going to be talking about the Elephant's Trunk Nebula and additionally the Flying Bat Nebula, one of the smaller ones that's kind of off to the side, gets overshadowed by the Elephant Trunk. Now these two nebulae are within the constellation of Cepheus. Now these are both nebulae, so feel free to use your broadband filters on them if you want. However, I would definitely urge you to get a bit of hydrogen alpha in there as well, a bit of narrowband data, because HARGB nebulae absolutely punch and they are so fun to do. So 200 to 300 millimeters, that is my suggestion. And now at 300 to 400 millimeters, I have IC1805 as well as IC1848. These are the heart and soul nebulae located within the constellation of Cassiopeia. Now Cassiopeia has been one of those famous old faithful ones that's usually quite high up in the sky. You can usually get some kind of imaging solution onto it. These are very large nebulae However, they are far away, so they look small. That's why we need the slightly longer focal length. Again, emission-based nebulae. So your narrowband filters, for example, will come out really clutch here. The heart nebula particularly looks very good in an SHO palette. So at 300 to 400 millimeters, that would be my suggestion to you. And now for 500 to 600 millimeters, we're gonna stay within Cassiopeia, and I'm gonna now tell you about SH2-155 a Sharpless catalog object known as the Cave Nebula. Now the Cave Nebula is actually <sighs> deceiving in its size. When you look at it on programs like Stellarium, it looks like it's just a rather small object, but there's loads of nebulosity around it. Again, it is an emission-based nebula, one of the most common types. Works really well in natural color and it's red. So add a bit of that HA to punch through those gassy colors with those natural star colors and you're going to have a very nice photo to show for it. So that, again, that is my suggestion at 500 to 600 millimeters, the Cave Nebula. Now for 700 to 800 millimeters, I'm going to give you a double whammy here. We're double dipping on the targets for this focal length. So if you are something or someone like me in your latitude or your skies, you can't really see the south, then I'm going to point you over to M33, the Triangulum Galaxy, located, funnily enough, in the constellation of Triangulum near Andromeda. Very, very nice looking galaxy, rather face on, some great imaging potential here. However, if you do have access to the south, I'm gonna point you to M8, which is the Lagoon Nebula located within Sagittarius, or that area of the night sky. It is a wonderfully large pool of a nebula. I can see why it gets its name of Lagoon. It's absolutely gorgeous. However, those are my two suggestions for this focal length. So up to 1,000 millimeters now, we're talking more longer focal length instruments. I'm gonna point you over to IC59, the ghost of Cassiopeia, which is a very, very faint nebula located in Cassiopeia, near the bright star of Navi. That makes it really awkward to photograph. It's got a slight challenge to it. However, again, double dipping here. If you have access to the constellation of Sagittarius, then we're gonna go for the big one itself, M16, the Eagle Nebula. Fits really nicely in the frame at 1000 millimeters. Again, large billowing wings to this absolutely glorious and gorgeous nebula. Something I wish I can photograph sometime. If not, I'm gonna to have to photograph it through you. Go out there and take a photo for me. So 1000 millimeters, we have the Ghost of Cassiopeia or the Eagle Nebula, take your pick. Up into 1,500 millimeters now, so really long focal lengths, I'm gonna point you over to the constellation of Vulpicula. 
And within here we have the NGC 6823, which is a nebulous blob region. I've got no other way of calling it. I don't know if it has a colloquial name apart from its designation, but if you look at it, it's like a glob nebula that has some really interesting tendrils pointing out of it, like some little arms coming out, like some weird alien creature. So at 1,500 millimeters, that is my suggestion to you. Finally, up at 2,000 millimeters, the longest focal length I'm gonna be talking to you about today, we have NGC 7331, which is a group of galaxies. So we have Stevens Quintent just over to the side there. However, we also have the Deer Lit Group galaxy in the middle. And you can quite easily position the framing here to include all of these galaxies in one shot. And that'd be my suggestion to you. And that is in the constellation of Pegasus. However, if you think I still haven't given you enough within the Sagittarius constellation, we can also go over to M20, one of my personal favorite nebulae, the Triffid Nebula. A wonderful blue and red reflective emissive nebula cluster there. It is absolutely glorious. 2000 millimeters fills this really nicely. Of course, you can use smaller chip cameras at different focal lengths to get a similar result. Time to move on and talk about planets for you planet hunters out there. Now I make a rule that I'll only include a planet in this list if it gets above 30 degrees altitude so it gets past most of the murky stuff in our atmosphere. And within August we actually have five to choose from, plenty of choice. Starting close to us we have Mars. The red planet itself will be available to photograph within the early morning so it's going to be from midnight onwards and we're talking more before dawn. So if you want to get an image of Mars when it's nice and high, it's an early start. Now, as we get later on through the year and the Earth carries on its orbit around the sun, Jupiter actually comes into play from the mid to late of August. So Jupiter will also be available to photo. And if Jupiter doesn't take your interest, we have Saturn as well. Saturn is up and available for us to take a photo of. Very popular, of course, with its iconic ring always a famous one to show that one off, isn't it, Saturn? So we have Saturn. Again, if Saturn doesn't take you in chess, you want something a little bit more challenging, further outfield, we have Uranus. So Uranus will also be available target. Of course, it's very far away. You're gonna need quite long optics to get a picture of this. And if you still think that is too easy, finally, of course, we have Neptune. Neptune is also up in the sky at above 30 degrees altitude. But of course, if you fancy something a little closer to home, Earth's own satellite, the moon, is always there for us to take a picture of or to know when to get the narrowband filters out or just to stay inside. So the moon phases for August are as follows. The new moon falls on the 4th of August. The first quarter is on the 12th. Full moon, the Sturgeon moon, falls on the 19th of August. And finally, the last quarter moon is on the 26th of August. And now on to any notable events that are happening within the month of August. And to start off on the 21st of August, the moon is going to oculate Saturn or oculation of Saturn by the moon. This is where the moon is going to pass in front of Saturn from our visual standpoint. Now this is going to happen between 4 and 5 a.m. on the morning of the 21st of August. For example, Solarium is saying it's going to happen at about 4.30 from the United Kingdom. However, I do recommend you use something like Stellarium just to double check what time is going to happen in your area if you want to go out and try and catch it. And on the 26th of August, not content with just passing in front of Saturn, the moon now has to make its way through the Pleiades open star cluster M45. Now feel free to try and take a photo of this if you want. The moon will be in its last quarter stage still going to be quite bright. It's going to be basically impossible, I'm going to say, to get any nebulosity out of the Pleiades whilst keeping exposure right for the moon. It might be a composite kind of deal going on here. However, that is a thing that's going to happen in, the event in August, so I thought I'd let you know. And now to cap off this month, we actually also have a meteor shower in the form of the Persid meteor shower. Now this actually begins around the 17th of July, all the way up until about the 24th of August, with the peak being 12th to 13th of August. As such, the first quarter moon isn't really going to interfere with this here. It might light up the sky a bit, but you should still see some meteors. The Perth is being quite a lively meteor shower. At maximum, you might be able to expect up to 100 meteors 
an hour. So something to definitely get out, get your camera out, get your long exposures going, and try to catch some meteors going through the sky. Always a fun night out. That is the night sky in August, all wrapped up, done and dusted, ready to go. I hope you found something enjoyable in this list, something that you're going to go take a photograph of. Drop your own suggestions in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you think I could have done better, give it the old thumbs down. And if you want more like this, consider subscribing. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.